Hey everyone, so today I'm going to tell you about quasars, okay? Quasars are actually the brightest thing in the universe, more than supernova and maybe not more than your phone screen at 3 a.m., okay? But actually in this meme here, the things are the other way around, but I put it anyway because it was fun. So as I told you, I'm going to tell you about quasars and I'm going to explain it as simple as possible, okay? So first I'm going to give you a brief intro, then I'm going to tell you about their importance, what powers a quasar, how do we know? what we know about quasars at the moment. I'm going to tell you briefly about a quasar's physical features. Then I'm going to tell you about the life of a quasar very rapidly as well. And finally, I'm going to give you a summary. And for those of you that are following this channel and they know that this riddle right here is happening at the moment, the answer is coming next week. So you have one more week to figure out and discuss with other people, try to figure out what the answer is. And next week, you're going to see if you're right or not. Okay. And of course, as always, I'll give you a new riddle. In case you haven't seen that video, I'm going to put the link in the description. Okay. So let's go. Quasar. The word quasar is short for quasi-stellar radio source because when they were first discovered, these signals that astronomers found came from one place like a star. So they found something like a point in space that was emitting a lot of radio waves and it was like a point in space so it was not a galaxy it was not a nebula so that is where the name came from quasi stellar radio source now funnily enough most quasars are faint radio emitters they happen to be faint radio emitters so that one was kind of an exception now quasars emit in gamma rays x-rays ultraviolet visible light infrared and radio waves and they give uh, of enormous amounts of energy. Quasars can be a trillion times brighter than our sun. So the quasars are at the moment the brightest thing that we have in our universe, okay? Now, quasars are among the brightest and most distant known celestial objects and therefore they are crucial to understanding the early universe. These are the words of an astronomer. So why are they that important to study the early universe? The thing is, quasars are the most distant objects yet detected in the universe. So that means that they are very far away. If they are very far away, it means that they are very old. Light from quasars takes about billions of years to reach the Earth. So this means they are really one of the most distant things we ever found in the universe. Now, we found that fuzzy halo surrounding the quasars, okay? And that fuzzy halo are starlight from the galaxy that is hosting the quasar. Now, we can measure the redshifts of those galaxies. Now, redshift is a measurement about on how fast and how distant uh, an object is from you, okay, and moving away from you. And the bigger the redshift, the faster it's moving away from you. The bigger the redshift, the more distant it is from you. And the bigger the redshift, therefore, the older that object is. So these galaxies have very high redshifts which point that these are the earliest quasars known and they were formed less than a billion years after the Big Bang. Believe it or not, in astrophysics, a billion years after the Big Bang is very soon after the Big Bang, okay? Now, for this reason, the study of quasars can provide astronomers with information about the early stages of the universe. Now, the quasar's glow is created by particles accelerated at velocities approaching the speed of light. Now, it is known that the total size of a quasar cannot be more than a few light days across, because they also vary in brightness, okay? So, with some calculations, we know that they cannot be that big. Now, since the quasar is so compact and so luminous, the radiation pressure inside must be enormous. So, how can a quasar keep from blowing itself up? If there is so much pressure, how is not blowing it up. Now, we know from physics that it cannot exceed the Eddington limit. And the Eddington limit is the minimum mass at which the outward radiation pressure is balanced by the inward pull of gravity. If you have a mass that is smaller than that, if so if you exceed the Eddington limit, the outer layers of whatever you have in there are going to come off. It's not quite an explosion, but the outer layers are going to come off. So, when scientists 
discovered the quasars and figure out that they had to be very small, but also very luminous, they were thinking, what are they made of? What is going on in there? How can something be so small and give off so much light? So they were starting to think, what are the things that can be so compact and so luminous and they cannot exceed the Eddington limit? So the only way we can have something about this size with a mass of a million stars outshining by a hundred times the galaxy of a hundred billion stars is if we have an accretion by gravity onto a supermassive black hole. So there you go. That's how we figure out that quasars are believed to produce their energy from supermassive black holes in the center of the galaxies in which they are located. So basically a quasar is an active galaxy where in the center you have a supermassive black hole that is accreting a lot of material and, as you will see, producing jets as well, okay? Now, if you don't know what black holes and supermassive black holes are, I do have a video about it, but I'm just going to give you a note as well so you can then search in my channel like black holes, supermassive black holes. But black holes are formed when massive stars die. They are so dense that even light cannot escape their gravity. And supermassive black holes, they have many million times the mass of our sun and they are more mysterious. People don't quite know how they are formed. It could be a merge of black holes or seed black holes, okay? And they are found, found at centers of galaxies. So what we know so far, we know what a quasar is we know what they are possibly made of and what powers them a supermassive black hole and we know how we figure that out okay now how do they look like what is the physical appearance well at the center so they they look like you know this image that i have in here this animation so at the center you have a supermassive black hole then you have right after that the accretion disk where you have da gas dust and other stellar derbies that is closing into the supermassive black hole but not yet fallen on the event horizon okay and then you have the relativistic jets because quasars are getting so much radiation inside they are creating so much energy inside they actually sometimes give off relativistic jets which are beams of plasma propelled out along of the rotation axis so they are expelling the material they uh, accrete so far okay and these jets are coming out at high speeds approaching the speed of light so that's why it's called relativistic is almost the speed of light and the speed of light in case you don't know is 300 million uh, meters per second okay so three times 10 to the power of eight meters per second okay and quasars are quite big as well i mean the quasar itself in the center is not but the quasar the whole thing is quite big so this size in here they have different sizes but this one in here is about three times 10 to the power of 16 kilometers in diameter and if you want it in miles it's going to be 1.9 times 10 to the power of 16 miles okay so how are the quasars coming about and how do they live okay so what is the life cycle individual quasars appear as their central supermassive black hole begin to accrete gas at a high rate now possibly this supermassive black hole was triggered by a merger with another galaxy building up the mass of the central black hole this is not known for sure so from all the information that i gave you so far this part is the one where scientists are not so sure about okay now the current best estimate is that a quasar activity is episodic so sometimes it's active other times it's inactive with individual episodes lasting around a million light years and the total quasar lifetime lasting ar around a hundred million years okay so it comes on off on off on off and eventually it stops okay so at some point the quasar activity ceases completely leaving behind just the dormant super massive black hole found in most massive gal galaxies so for example in our galaxy we believe that we must had probably possibly a quasar at the center of it okay so or that we had a quasar that our uh, galaxy was active okay now this life cycle of quasars appears to proceed more rapidly with the most massive black holes which become dormant earlier than the less massive black holes and this kind of makes sense it's kind of what happens to stars as well the most massive stars 
the living die earlier and faster than less massive stars. So maybe it's the same in astrophysics when it comes to quasars. The most massive black holes power quasars, they are more short-lived than less massive supermassive black holes, okay? So, in summary, Quasar. A quasar stands for quasi-stellar radio source and is an astronomical object of very high luminosity that is found in the centers of some galaxies and is powered by gas spiraling at high velocity into the supermassive black hole that is at the center. Okay, The brightest quasars can outshine all of the stars in the galaxies in which they reside, which make them visible even at distances of billion light years. So even at this distance, we we see them and they are so luminous, okay? Now quasars are the most distant and luminous objects known and they are extremely important in understanding the early universe as their galaxies redshift points that they were formed shortly, meaning about a billion years after the Big Bang, okay? So this is all that I have for you about quasars in a very simple explanation. So I told you where the name came from, what they are, how we got to know that information about the supermassive black hole at a center. I gave you a little bit about the description of their physical feature. I told you why they are important and where they are important. So understanding the early universe, I told you about the life cycle, which is something that is from everything is the part that People know a little bit less, okay, in terms of quasars. And I gave you the summary, okay? So that is it for this video. As always, let me just remind you that next week you're going to have the answer for the riddle. I always give you a riddle and then I'll give you the answer later on. So if you haven't seen it yet, think about that riddle. I'm going to put the link in the description and up to my next video. I hope that you keep happy and healthy and safe, okay? Be careful with this virus going around. So up to my next video. Be happy and healthy. Bye. Bye.